Hello, I teach English composition at Seattle Central College in Seattle and I, I like to show my students, uh, I want to empower them and show them effective writing patterns. This pattern uh, I'm going to introduce to you today is a, uh, it's a tricky pattern. It's a high level pattern. Uh, typically I tell my students when they get to university uh, everything they read and everything they write will probably be in this pattern. Uh, in fact, this pattern will give the students uh, more control and power over their own interests. I call this pattern the pyramid pattern. The reason I call it the pyramid pattern because I, I encourage my students to first create a visual and the visual will look like this a pyramid. It's kind of funny that when I tell my students this pattern, I have it in my syllabus, they immediately Google it and all they get is something in uh, Egypt because this is something I developed as a visual. So this is a five-point pattern. Let me lay down the, pat, uh, the number over here and then I'll show you how this visual real, really works. It's a five-point pattern. Number one, is I want to present. Now here, they have a choice. I, three things, I can present a phenomena, event, or trend. So uh, let's say we're going to present a trend. So they have to control whether they're going to look at event, phenomena, or trend. Number two, now they have to argue for the drivers drivers that would drive this trend. Number three, they have to argue for consequences or long-term effects. Number four, this is the counter-argument section and I call it, uh, this is a little tricky for them to first get but then uh, after they get it they have it forever. And number five, the call to action. Let me show you how this pattern works for complex uh, topics. So let's take, um, you can take anything, let's take mass incarceration as an example. So using this visual I present the trend here. So the operative verb is to present. So I just simply want to present. Typically I'll use to, uh, two, two statistics and maybe a brief uh, description or definition. So this is what I do here. Some stats and maybe a description. So, for example, you have statistics like uh, to show the trend, increase or decrease over time. So it started in the 1970s. Uh, we had, uh, the United States had 300, uh, 350,000 incarcerated. And now as of 2015, it's 2.2 million and growing. So that statistic establishes the trend. Now also, I use another statistic because let's say, for example, I'm going to use Michelle Alexander's argument that this uh, mass incarceration, uh, the war on drugs is just a simple way, is a backlash to the civil rights movement of the 60s and 70s. And I'll show you how that works. So the second statistic will be the uh, percentage of uh, minorities incarcerated. And it's, it's approximately 60% or higher. Quite a significant statistic. That's my number one. Number two, I argue for drivers. So this is an argument. This is not a simple report. But I want to try to find hidden drivers or drivers that aren't so obvious at first blush. So this is how the, so I look for drivers that could explain this trend, this increase. So let's just say I'm looking at war on drugs, but not just simply uh, drugs per se, uh, incarceration, people incarcerated for drugs, but use Michelle Alexander's argument, more hidden, that the war on drugs is just a facade uh, as a way, as a backlash to the civil rights movement of the 60s and 70s, and it's a way, she calls it the new Jim Crow. So now you start to see I'm, I'm getting into the hidden drivers. Most people say, no, no, there's no connection to uh, controlling minorities uh, and just a way of oppressing a, a whole group of uh, people. 
But anyways, this is number two. Looking for hidden drivers. You notice this drives up to the number one. Number three, I argue for consequences. So from the number one, I want to look at consequences in the long term. So for example, disenfranchisement. Sorry for this. And then from there, I can continue going. I can look at hyper-ghettoization hyper or increased segregation. So that creates its own uh, little cycle. I can look at recidivism. Okay. So my, my point is, I want to look for that one more step, long-term effects. And this helps the students develop that critical thinking. I'll wrap it up with the last two. Number four, I take an alternative driver or alternative effect. I present that and then I counter it. Typical one would be, uh, well, uh, they did the crime, what's the big deal? Or blacks and uh, Latinos are more prone to criminality. So maybe the, the explanation would be black criminality. You notice I put a question mark there. So I do that for my subheadings. Now I present this, I find a source that makes this claim to account for the high percentage of minorities, and then I counter it. Okay. The last uh, part is number five, the call to action. So now this is quite substantial. I can say uh, we should abolish mandatory minimums. We should have more support for people incarcerated. Because once they're disenfranchised, they're stripped of many rights, hundreds of them. Most obvious one is voting rights. So I say restore voting rights. You see? So now I have all sources, and this is where my, it, this paper is quite substantial in saying this is what we need to do now. So this is the, it's a five point pattern. I call it the pyramid pattern. Many people will call it speculative pattern based on causes and effects. But you notice, this driver, this cause, does not connect to this effect and vice versa. See, there's no relationship here. If I see a relationship where there's a cause and effect, I, before I lose control, I call it a cycle, and then I decide where to put it. So I can put cycle of recidivism here because I'm in control. I show the cause and effect relationship because typically this is why this pattern is so slippery is most people want to go from the driver or the cause right to the effect and you don't want to do that. You're just arguing that these are the drivers that explain this event trend of phenomena and from this event trend of phenomena this is a long-term effects. Thank you.